Hello everyone, here we talk about conditional probability. Let's look at the experiment first. I randomly pick up one card from a standard set of cards and let you guess what kind of card it is. If you guess the card to be a heart, your chance of being right is 25%. Since we have only four different kind of cars, and each kind has the same uh, quantity, 13 hearts, 13 clubs, 13 spades, 13 diamonds. We use A to represent the event. The card is a heart. So the probability A equals 25%. This is a classical problem. If someone else came over and saw the card I chose, it was a red card and told you about. So you have extra information. So if you are guessing, you definitely not going to guess black. So your chance being right by guessing hard this time is 50% instead of 25% since you have extra information. This kind of probability is called a conditional problem. You consider extra information. That is your condition. Another event, B. The card is a red, is involved in this situation. So the probability being a hard, considering extra information or under the condition B is called conditional probability. Probability A or PA is the probability without any condition. And we use different notation for condition no probability, which is a PA, and condition B. We use a vertical line separate these two events. Event B followed after this vertical line. That's called a conditional event. Being given B already happened. We already know B happened. And we talk about probability A. That is called conditional probability and it is noted as P A and condition B which is A vertical line followed with B. Conditional probability is the probability of an event occurring given that another event has occurred. If we know event A has occurred Based on this information, the probability of event B occurring is denoted as probability B under condition A. And the definition is given by calculating probability A and B divide by probability A. So this gives us the idea you can, based on the classical probability, understand that kind of situation when we already know event A happens, so we only need to focus on the outcomes event A includes. So that is the bottom part, PA. We only focus on this part. And then in this part of the outcomes, how much chance or how much of them which is involved in B happen as well. So that is A and the B, that's part. So logically speaking, this is very clear. Conditional probability being defined or being calculated as probability A and B divided by probability A. So the definition can be rearranged as the equivalent impression below. So these two expressions, which are simply use the 
bottom part in this definition move to the other side so probability a and b equals to probability a multiply probability b and the condition a or equals probability b multiply probability a and the condition b both these expressions are called the general rule of multiplication you can apply them anywhere anytime if you have this kind of information with conditional probability we can easily understand the independence between two events two events are code independent if one event does not have influence to the probability of the other event in, in other words one event happening or not does not affect the chance of the other event happening it basically says the following facts probability b equals probability b under condition a that means no matter a happened or not the chance for event b happen is not going to change and another part we can also say probability A equals probability A and condition B. That also says no matter B happen or not, it's not going to change the chance of event A happen. If we have this kind of situation, two events A and B are called independent. With the definition of the conditional probability we learned earlier and we can get this idea if probability A and B equals probability A multiply probability B and they are called independent or the other way if two events A and B are independent then this expression must be true probability A and B this is called a joint probability equals to each event probability multiplied together so this is the feature for us to recognize if two events are independent you may recall another concept you learned at the beginning we say event A and B are mutually exclusive that means A and B cannot happen together so that also means probability A and B equals zero so do not get these two concepts confused mutually exclusive and independent they are totally different mutually exclusive only says the happening situation if they can happen together and independence is based on if they influence the chance of happening each other they are very different here we have a typical example we do experiment and we throw the chip in this rectangular area and we can do this experiment many times and then we try to observe the landing position so here we have a simple example very typical and very useful for us to understand the probability and conditional probability and the relationships of events we have two circles being marked red and purple so when we throw the chips into this rectangular area if the chip landed in the red circle we call event a happen if the chip landed in the purple circle we call event B happen so now as you can see we have done 10 times that means uh, 10 chips being thrown 
in this rectangular area and we show you the result where they landed based on this result and let's figure out some probabilities of events part a probability a that means with this experiment results how much chance the chips landed in red circle so we can see total we have 10 chips and three of them landed in red circle so this give us idea about the, the probability of this kind of event this is called empirical probability we calculate the probability based on historical data based on the result what we have observed so the probability a is 3 out of 10 30 percent or 0 0.3 part b probability a under condition b you have to understand the meaning it says if we already know b happened how much chance a happened or if we already know the chips landed in purple circle and then we try to figure out how much chance the chip is also in red circle you understand the meaning and you find out the answer directly if the chips landed in purple circle so this is the condition we know that happened so we only focus on these four chips in purple circle we can see that total you have four chips in purple so how many of them also landed in red only one of them so the probability is one out of four 25 percent or 0 0.25 This is a conditional probability. Probability A under condition B is 25%. Part C is also conditional probability. We switched probability B under condition A. So this time we talk about if we already know the chips landed in red circle how much chance the chip is also in purple circle so in red circle we have three chips how many of them in purple one so it's one out of three 0 0.33 or 33.33 percent that is the answer for this conditional probability part d probability a and b we're looking for the chance the chip landed in red circle and in purple circle when we look at the result we have only one chip in this kind of situation and for this probability we do not have any condition so we consider total 10 chips you have one only belong to two circles so that's one out of ten ten percent or 0 0.1 part e probability a or b that means the chance the chip landed in red or purple landed in red or purple this is inclusive situation so we can count how many in that kind of situation one two three four five six so we have six out of ten sixty percent or 0 0.6 is the answer for this question part F probability a under condition B bar it means if we know the chips 
not in purple circle. How much chance the chip in red circle? B bar means B not happen. If we know B not happen, we only focus on those chips not in purple circle. We can see six of them not in purple circle. So that's our focus. And within these six chips not in purple circle, how many belong to red purple? Clearly, two of them. So, probability A under condition B bar is two out of six. 0.33 or 33.33%. Part G. Probability B under condition A bar. This time we talk about if we know the chips not in red circle. How much chance the chip in purple circle? So when we look at how many chips not in red circle, we can see three belong to red, so outside should be seven. So we have seven chips. That's what we focus on. Within these seven chips, how many belong to purple circle? Three of them. So the answer, probability B under condition A bar is three out of seven, or 0 0.43. Part H. Probability A bar and B bar. It says how much chance the chip not in red circle and not in purple circle either. Not in any circle. So that's the case. And we can see that directly four outside both circles. And we have no condition, so we consider total 10 and four of them. So probability A bar and B bar is four out of 10, 0 0.4 or 40%. Hope you understand the probability and conditional probability from this typical example. It's very important to understand the logic. See you next time.